Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time to take a look at another Studio 86 Transformer figure. And this time around, we have Cop. And of course, like all the other Studio figures, he has a backdrop featuring a scene that he was in in the movie. And it shows the octopus that Cup was ensnared in on Quintessa. Unfortunately, since Cup was incapacitated throughout that scene, I really don't care for it as much as some of the others. I'd have preferred him on a surface scene on Quintessa so that we could have had him and Hot Rod looking like they were dealing with some of the Quintesson Alicons. Of course, we have right here, we've got the Studio 86 Hot Rod and the Earthrise Alley Con. And they look pretty good together. They do look rather good together. Get these guys out of the way here. Of course, get the backdrop out of the way as well. And of course, a little background on Cup for many of the newer viewers here to the channel. Cup was originally released in 1986 as one of the figures to promote the animated film. As this version right here is. Now this early version also had, on some toys, a metal chest, which would later get replaced with a plastic one. But of course, unlike many of the toys that had been released that year, this version of Cup would only be on the shelf for one year instead of two years. He would come back in 1987, done up as a Target Master where he would basically have bigger holes in his hands to hold a different gun. But of course he also has a hole mounted in the tailgate so that the gun can be mounted and fire out the back. So you see viewers, there is a reason why Cup doesn't have a rear door to the truck. It's so the gun can stick out the back and shoot. Now, are any of you buying that story? Neither am I. Okay, let's take a moment here and we'll take a look at Cup's accessories. We will start here with his gun. His gun is described as an old-style musket laser. Which... Reality doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But then again, it doesn't have to. But the one nice thing about this gun is that it does bear a fair amount of resemblance to the original gun. Except it's almost three, almost three quarters smaller than the original gun. But as you can see, a fair amount of the same details are present. So, that's an interesting little choice. And then, of course, for Cup's other accessory, he has this canteen that he had the Energon bits in that he and Hot Rod were feeding to the Alicons. It's another reason why I'm disappointed they went with the octopus scene for his backdrop. They should have went more with the surface of Quintessa scene. That would have been more appropriate with the accessories. Now with all of his accessories out of the way, let's take a look at Cup's articulation. His head can be turned from side to side, and it does rock a bit up and down from being on a ball joint. His arm can be raised up about so far, and it does rotate at the shoulder all the way. 
You can bend his arm at the elbow, almost 170 degrees. And he does have a swivel at his bicep. So he does have that G.I. Joe battle grip. And of course, his hand, I thought his hands did twist at the wrist, but they don't. They are solid, which is good. Cup can be turned at his hips. We can spread his legs into a full split. He also can have his leg twisted at the thigh. You can raise his leg at the hip 90 degrees, and you can bend him at the knee just under 90 degrees. So he does have a fair bit of articulation, but some of it is a bit restricted. And something else to point out to many of you collectors, his arms easily pop off at the elbow. Because you just saw there was no effort there whatsoever, and his arm came off. So I guess you can reenact part of the scene of him being in there with the octopus. You can at least take his arm off with relative ease. Okay, let's get Cup transformed into his alternate mode. And the first thing we have to do is we turn his head so it's facing his back. You're going to raise the arms at the shoulders, but you're going to pop the shoulder plates here out as well. Just like that. Then we're going to turn him around. We're going to fold down his back unit here. And then also we're going to unfold it all the way out. Like that. Because we're going to come here and we're going to fold out these pieces. From his back. So it will form wheels. Then we're going to take his arms. And we turn the arms so that they're pointing that direction. And then we swivel them around to the back side. Because then we're going to fold him down at the chest area. to start folding him backwards. Once we get him folded back far enough, we're going to take this fold out section here and it should fold over and cover his head completely. And it should just snap into place. Should just snap into place. Okay, it doesn't want to. Hold on a second. Okay, now that we have that piece snapped in, you shift the body so that, again, the cab is facing outward. This way it looks like a truck cab attached to a set of legs. And then we're going to fold the arms back at this shoulder piece. You'll need to adjust the arms a bit so that they come down beneath the truck. They should just go in and of course as stated we're going to have to shift the arms downwards a bit. So they will want us to spread the legs and shift everything. So do be prepared to bend the arms at the elbow. Then now once we got him down here, I'm going to open up the legs at the kneecap and fold them outward. Hmm, something just popped free here. 
Yeah, here's your another piece that'll pop free on you folks. The feet will pop free. Again, we did not intentionally do that. And then now we end up separating him at the knee joint a bit. Apparently once it's been separated, we can fold the knees down. Because we're going to fold out this section of leg uh, to come forward. And it should attach up front. Mine's being a mess, so excuse me again. Okay, there was something we missed early on with the arms. as we, Before we fold them in, there's a section of them here. And it's supposed to rotate. We got the arm removed so that way it's easier for all of you to see how that works. Then when that's folded inwards like that, then we should have no trouble getting the fender to fold out and everything to connect. There we go. Now it's connecting. All right, so get the arms plugged back in under here. That way we all can see them. Get this other fender in, and then we can continue. In you go. There we are. That's better. There we go. That's better. Now, of course, once those are in, we can fold down the sides of the truck here, and these will form the bed of the truck. Just fold it down, connect it together. That'll help hold the truck together. Then, of course, we reach down underneath the truck bed, and you can plug the fists into the bottom of the bed. And then there we have it. There's Cup's alternate mode of the Cybertronian truck. Which, of course, it still looks just as ridiculous today as it did back then. Now, of course, for some weapon storage... There's a post on the side of his gun, so the gun can be mounted over here. And, of course, there's also a similar post on the Energon canteen, so that you can mount it over here. And of course, how well does he roll? Rolls fairly good, given the way he's designed. And of course, let's have a look at him next to the 1986 original. And as you can see, he is slightly shorter than the original toy. By a decent margin, at least. Of course, the colors are considerably more subdued on this new version, which would be more in line with how he appeared in the animated film. Now, of course, for comparison's sake, there's the Target Master version. Just so that you can see how it looks with the gun sticking out the back. Unfortunately, they didn't give us a post hole, to mount the gun that way. 
Although we do have a couple of holes here on the back of the legs. Let's see, will the post connect to that? Let's give it one more try. Nope, it's not wide enough. Post isn't wide enough. The hole isn't wide enough to mount it. So, can't do it, unfortunately. So now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of the Studio Cup? I think it's a nice improvement on a lot of the toys that have been done of Cup. Since many of them really haven't captured the design just right. So this one's probably the closest we're ever going to see of one being totally accurate. I do like his accessories. The gun is especially nice since it does pretty well match the original toy's gun. So it shows somebody did at least look in the Hasbro archives on this one. And I do like him coming with the canteen. I do wish, however, they had picked a different scene to use for him. But again, that's just personal preference. If I do have a gripe about him, it is the way the instructions are done for the transformation. They don't exactly make it clear that you had to rotate that section in there. I really wish Hasbro would go back to some of the old-style instructions that they had from Generation 1, where it had some text as well as pictures, so you had a better idea of what you were doing. Unfortunately, Hasbro's famous cheapness says they're not going to waste ink on text when pictures are all that people seem to respond to. At any rate, that's my review of the Studio 86 version of Cup. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and join our ranks. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified when we post new content. We also ask that you share this video with your friends and fellow collectors. That helps this channel grow. And leave your thoughts about Cup in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I'll catch you all later.